Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I'm going to talk about HDR toning in Photoshop CS6. Now you can do this similarly in CS5, you just might have to change some of your settings a little bit, but it's all pretty much the same. So recently I had a newcomer to the blog, his name is Larry. Everyone say, hi Larry. Um, Larry asked me about HDR toning in Photoshop CS6, and I typically don't do my tone mapping in Photoshop. I never did in CS5 and I typically don't do it in CS6 because to me tone mapping five bracketed exposures in Photoshop takes a lot of time and the product that I get is just not nearly as strong as some of the uh, other products you can get out there. But it does have a place in my workflow. It's just typically not in my tone mapping process. I usually use it on single image exposures to really bring it out uh, some detail in those single exposures. Uh, for instance, this frog doesn't like to um, sit still for too long. Maybe it's a toad. I'm not a biologist, so don't baffle me. But my wife took a picture of it, and I really liked her picture, and I was kind of jealous, so I had to throw my macro lens on there and get all up in its face. But it's smiling at me. You can see him smiling. Um, anyway, um, I typically do a HDR high-pass layer with HDR toning. So it goes a little something like this. Let's check it out. Go to your history palette and uh, go ahead and press this little plus sign with the page. That's going to duplicate your state as to where you are right now. The reason why I do that, and I'm going to show you why, is if I do my normal workflow, which is pressing Control J to do non-destructive editing, and then I go to image and adjustments and go to HDR toning, it's going to flatten the layer anyway. But I want to preserve the state that I was in. That's why I duplicate it in the history palette first. Press yes. Now, typically what I'm trying to do here is make a high-pass sharpen layer. Um, it's the high-pass part. So I'm going to drop all the shadow down, I'm going to drop all the highlights down, drop all the vibrance down, and drop all the saturation down. It's going to look like black and white, and it's supposed to. Now let's go ahead and start over up from the top here and start playing with some settings. I'm going to increase the radius to about 100, 105, to 110. Um, it really, there really isn't much, um, I don't know, uh, no real uh, rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I'm really just experimenting to see what's going to happen as I click through things. I don't like it what it looks like when I press smooth edges. I'm going to leave the gamma about the same um, exposure. I might drop that down a little bit because I really want a lot of medium gray here. And then the detail, I'm going to slam this detail up. It looks nasty. D don't judge, please. Don't judge me. Um, it's too high though, 260 is too high. Let's go around 197. Eh, it's a rounded off number. No, let's go 195 just for uh, the sake of being uh, on, a, on a number people like. You know, if you say something like, I'll be there in seven minutes, people don't like to hear that. They like to hear I'll be there in five minutes, so let's put it 195. So press OK. Wait for it to convert the image. Now, we want the Move tool. So press the V key for the Move tool press the shift key and click in the middle and drag it over to the other image. You can go ahead and get rid of this now, you don't need it anymore. Press the Z key, fit on screen. There's my original image, this is my new high pass sharpen layer. And if you know anything about high pass sharpening, you're going to want to do something like soft light, maybe uh, maybe some hard light, ooh, way too much. Uh, but you know, if that's your style, go ahead. I like soft light. Overlay is still a little too much too. Soft light, nice, clean, high pass. How does it look? It's already starting to look better, but it does need some tweaking. Now, one of the things that we brought in when we brought this in was a little bit of noise in our shadows. Easy to take care of. I'm actually gonna do something that most people probably don't do, but um, just go to filter, go to noise, and go to dust and scratches. Again, this is a high pass level, or high pass sharpen layer, so we aren't too worried about losing any detail per se in the image. So dust and scratch is actually an acceptable thing to use. Just use a radius of a one for your pixels. What that's gonna do is clean up any of that noise uh, that we were seeing up here. Let's go back here. See how it's cleaning up that noise? Just a little bit. I just, you know, I'm, I'm anal. Now, I wanna hike up the saturation a little bit. So I'm gonna go to uh, hue saturation. And I wanna hike up the saturation typically in his eyeball, which I think is in the reds. Let me let me take a look. Um, yep, there's some in the reds. So we'll go ahead and use a little bit of the reds. And then a little bit of the yellows too, to bring out some of the yellow in that eyeball too. Okay. But I don't like what it's done to the area around him. So 
not a big problem. I can click on that mask. I can press Control I for invert. Now B for the brush tool. I'm on this layer mask. I can paint in white over his eye where I want that saturation to come back. Very cool, huh? But I also did like the fact that there was some saturation coming through um, through his skin too. So I'm going to go to hue saturation again, make another hue saturation layer, and just kind of bring that saturation up a little bit. Plus 25. Again, people want to be there five minutes, not seven minutes. Let's go plus 25. So, it's still doing a little too much to the eyeball on, uh, too much saturation in the eyeball now doing that. So what I'm going to do is press Alt, click on the mask that's on the, uh, the hue saturation layer below it, and drag it up replace it, say yes, and now I'm going to invert that mask, which is going to go ahead and um, push away all the saturation that was on that eyeball because it's basically the inverse of the mask below it. Go to curves. It's always good to throw a curves layer on there. And just play. Typically an S-curve, pull the black down a little bit and pull the white up a little bit. Typically it's good for you. Now, if this uh, tone mapped high pass sharpen layer is too much, you can always control it with the with the opacity slider. You can drop that opacity down a little bit or bring it up a little bit. But the big question you have to ask yourself here is are we better off now than we were four years ago? I mean four minutes ago. Yeah, four minutes ago. Sorry, it's a Democratic talk or Republican, whatever is going on. I think we are. Um, click and drag on your layers. And you see, we, we brought out the dynamic range. We haven't necessarily made this a high dynamic range because it's multiple exposures, because a frog or toad, for the sake of argument, um, is kind of difficult to make five exposures of because he liked to move. So, But we have exploited his dynamic range. We have brought out the dynamic range that existed there. We've just exaggerated a little bit, exploited it, however you want to put it. My name is Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com, and this was HDR toning uh, in Photoshop CS6 on a high-pass layer to make a pseudo HDR. Uh, it's a long title, so we'll just leave it at that. Have a great weekend. Do some of this. See what you think. Uh, leave me some feedback. I love hearing it. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.